Hi, I'm David from Plymouth University. Today what I want to do is show you how you might migrate from a Windows system or Mac system to a Linux system. Perhaps you want to dual boot it or perhaps you have an old system gathering dust and you want to give it a new lease of life which Linux can do. So um, when you want to install Linux, basically just boot up your computer, um, put the Linux CD into your drive and then restart it and you'll be um, confronted with this screen here. Um, most people will want the first option here which is start or install Ubuntu. However, if you've got an old computer you might want to test the memory of it first which is quite a cool um, feature of uh, Ubuntu. So you just go down to memory test and check that. You might want to also check the install CD for defects which you can do just by going down to check CD um, defects. There's also accessibility options if you press F5 on your keyboard, you can choose a few there. We need none at the moment. Uh, but yeah, and um, finally, start Ubuntu in safe graphics mode. If it kernel panics during this start install, you might want to come back to this screen and try this option. It might be better for you. But yeah, just click and then hit enter. And you start. A really cool uh, feature of most uh, Linux distributions is the ability to uh, run the operating system from a live CD which basically allows you to uh, like test drive the operating system pretty much do everything aside from obviously uh, saving things because you're running from a CD and not the hard drive. So once you've like tested anything, hey this is cool, I want to install this operating system, you just go back to the desktop, double click on the install icon which will load everything. First, um, you just choose your language. I speak English, I believe, so I'll keep that selected. Just go forward. Uh, next, you choose your location in the world. Um, there's a select city here, but it's easier, I find, to find your country on the map than just zoom in. Um, then find the closest icon, which is London in this case. So just click on London, uh, click forward. Uh, next you need to choose your keyboard layout, it's set at the moment to US English but uh, we're in England so we'll click on United Kingdom. If you have, obviously if you have a foreign keyboard you might want to use the other ones or if you live in a foreign country obviously. Uh, this is a standard UK keyboard so we'll keep that selected. Obviously if you've got a Macintosh computer um, you'll want to click on the United Kingdom Macintosh which because of you have the Apple uh, key and all that kind of stuff so we have that selected. We click forward. Uh, next we come on to the scary bit I suppose which is the partition manager. Um, before you do before you do any of this, um, you, and if you're installing onto a, like a, a dual boot system, uh, you want to boot into your Windows or Mac partition and make sure you back up all your important files. Because even though this is a reasonably safe thing to do, it could delete everything and I've known it happened and it's happened to myself where I've deleted a partition and it's not very good because you'll lose all your data and it's impossible to recover in this kind of setup so don't, don't, don't do it. Uh, you get three options when you um, get it, finally get into the partition, um, partition manager. The first one, which is probably the one you want, as long as your hard drive isn't too fragmented or it's not full, <coughs> it will um, create a new partition from the, from the percentage of free space that you choose with the slider. Uh, so, for instance, I've chosen to make a partition of 7 gigabytes of 25% of the free space. Or if this is an old computer, um, which you're giving new lease of life to, and you don't really need Windows on it anymore, you can just um, do guided, but with uh, using the entire disk. And obviously this would overwrite any other operating system you have on your computer. Or well, finally, I won't run through it now, but I'll just talk about it quickly, is a manual one where you can set up and customise the partitions completely yourself. Uh, you're feeling kind of geeky I suppose. Uh, so yeah, that's the three options and you just click forward and then forward again and then it will install the operating system. Ubuntu comes with a uh, built-in directory of lots of software you can install for uh, the operating system. To access just go to applications and add or remove. It will check for all updates of this software and then uh, show you a directory. You can search um, at the top there, in this case this is what I'm doing, and I've just typed bit to find the BitTorrent client. Uh, I've looked down 
the list and I found transmission which is quite good so I've ticked that and I'll like apply changes it will confirm all the changes apply again it will then ask for my administrator password which you need to do whenever you install software and then click apply and then it will install it for you and that is it as simple as that like Windows and Mac you can just plug in your iPod and it will work straight off um, I'm using a client here called Banshee which you can install through the add and remove feature it looks as you can see much like iTunes um, when you first plug your iPod in you need to go to it and um, rebuild the database which is quite simple to do it's just a few click throughs as you can see to add songs to your um, iPod just go to your music library select all the songs you want to add to it in this case I want to add this album here so I select it and then as in iTunes just drag it onto the iPod a note about mp3 support it does support it but you have to um, install the code out separately which isn't legal because of patent issues so I'm not going to tell you how to do it but it is quite simple The Microsoft Office equivalent in Ubuntu is OpenOffice, which you can also get for Windows or Mac. It looks, works and feels much the same as Microsoft Office, so it's quite easy to convert to. A neat feature um, is the ability to save in Microsoft Office formats, in this case a doc doc file. To do so, you just save the document as you normally would. Um, when the dialog box comes up on the right hand drop down list, you just need to select Microsoft Office uh, 97 2000 and XP and then save it wherever and with whatever name you'd like to and that's it it will uh, warn you that some of the features uh, will be disabled because they're open office features only and not available in Microsoft Office you just need to accept that and it's fine To set up a printer in Ubuntu, just go to System Administrator and then Printing, then New Printer. This will list all the possible devices uh, that could be printers. In this case, it's a Dell laser printer, which you can see there. It's picked up the IP address, so we just click Forward. This will search for the drivers. To help it along its way, uh, we can give it the uh, brand name of the uh, printer. In this case, it's a uh, Dell, so I find Dell, I click it. You can use uh, generic if you want. Uh, and then it recommends this type of driver, and I click OK and forward. And then that's it. It should be installed onto your system. Um, to check it, you can uh, say open any printable document. Uh, in this case, I was open Open Office and uh, type test test, and then just obviously go to file and then print. And you'll be able to see that the printer name is there. I click OK. Then in the taskbar, I click on the printer icon to see all the printer jobs, and you can see it's processing and it's sent. So that's awesome. To share a folder in Ubuntu, just go to System, Administrator, and then Folder Sharing. Then click Add. Under Path, select a folder. If it's not there, just click Other, and then find the folder you want. Give it a comment. And then you also need to select if it's a Windows um, system you're sharing to or a Unix system. A Unix system is obviously Linux or Mac. So just select which one and then click OK. And that's it. It's shared. To use the work area feature, just click on the icons on the bottom right corner there to move between or use the scroller on your mouse. And that's it.